All right, for this uh, lesson seven of CS Discoveries Unit 2 Web Development, we're going to learn how to um, use your personal style to create a website with some HTML and CSS on it. So first of all, you'll want to go ahead and do the um, project guide here. Um, fill that out to plan out how you want your website to look like and what kind of CSS code you'll use. Then we're going to go ahead and hit continue. And we're going to start with uh, working through these activities. So there's five activities to do. So we'll start with adding a heading set rule. So um, we're going to go ahead and add some rules for the heading. So we've got, looks like an H1 and an H3. If we go to style.css, we can then go just a couple spaces below the body rule set. And let's do one for H1. And just remember to use your curly brackets and put all your rules in between them. So let's say the color for the heading is going to be dark green. And then we can, we could do text decoration, and we'll make this an underline. Okay, and then maybe we'll have a font family of fantasy. There we go. All right, so there's my H1. And then if I want to do an H3, I'm just going to copy these and paste it and let's change my h3 and maybe we want a different let's try so you could just make some different rules for each one let's take out the underline let's, yeah let's just take this one out so there we go so we've got a little bit about elephants for the heading so let's hit finish and we'll move to b change the text color so they want us to just uh, change the uh, heading and the paragraphs for uh, to have them both be different colors. So once again, I'm going to do H1 for my heading, put in my curly brackets and change the color. Color, dark blue, and let's change, we're going to come down here, we're going to make a rule for the paragraph, and we will go ahead and make the color of the paragraphs. So let's choose one from here. Dark slate gray. There we go. All right, so those two are in there. Let's hit refresh and save. And I believe that did change it. Yeah, it did. It's just hard to tell the difference. I'm just going to do this just so you can see the difference a little bit better. So let's go ahead and finish and move to the next one. And we've got align text. So let's figure out how to do that. Um, we want to look at the author's names. We've got Helen Keller here. So if we click Inspector on, we can go here. That's using an H3. And this is using an H3 as well. So we need to add a rule set for the H3 tag to move it to the right side of the screen. So we're going to come over here. We've got our H3 here already. Um, it's got a font size of 12, but we need to do a text align to the right. So text align, colon, right. And now we've got the name showing up on the right side. For D, we're going to be changing the font family, and they want us to change a rule set for one of the heading types to make it a different font family, and then add a rule set for the paragraphs to make them another font family. So let's just choose one of the, in our style, let's choose one of the headings. Let's do H1. Okay, we're going to change the font family, so it's font-family, and just make sure you have your colon there. And let's do monospace for that one. And then for the paragraphs, Let's do P and then create our rules with our curly brackets. For the paragraphs, we're going to go ahead and use a font family as well. We're going to change that to, what do we got here? Let's do fantasy. There we go. So we've got our two different font families for our heading and paragraph, for H1 at least. Okay, next, change the font size. We're going to go to E. They want us to add a rule set for the heading to make it a different font size and then add a rule set for the paragraphs to make them another font size. So let's go ahead and do, we do H1 and we'll say font size 40 pixels. Okay, and then we'll do, let's do H3. 
We'll change the font size for the H3 as well. Font size, 30 pixels. And then we'll say paragraphs. And let's make the paragraphs font size 20 pixels. So it's really easy to read this web page. So that's it for that one. And we can move on to section three or exercise three here. So we've got introduction to RBG. We're going to find out how we can use the RGB values to change the color. Okay, so we can go ahead and adjust here. We've got red. Can we change this? No, it just wants us to slide. It says red 216. We'll get close to it. Um, blue, sorry, green is going to be 191. So I'm just looking at the numbers showing over here. And then um, we're going to go blue as 216. All right, close enough. Okay, so we're just picking, it looks like it's that number there. So you can just go through and play around with that. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, but then we can use the RGB colors on a website. So here, we're going to find the CSS rule set in the style sheet that give the red words their style. Okay, so we're looking over here at style sheet. We've got right here. We've got, uh, actually got a red here. We've got a red zero, which are these colors. We've got a red one, which are these values. A red two, which are a little bit different values. A uh, three and a four, so it looks like we've got all four of these different values. And if we click over on here, back to the HTML, we can look at the inspector to see what's going with what. So class red zero is the darkest, class red four is the lightest. So we haven't really gone over class yet, but a class is something that you can create. And it, the classes start with a period. See how this period here? We've got another period here. So period red zero, that's how you write uh, rules for a class that you can create. So a class of dot red zero is going to be having these numbers and they want us to update the styles for green and blue to try different colors using RGB. So for green and blue, it's already got the class names in here. So instead of green, we're going to say, let's get some values. So RGB and let's get some values. Hmm. Um, what happens if we do zero? 255, zero. What does that look like? Okay, that's a bright green. Um, if we wanted to adjust it, we could we could change it to different types of green as well. So it looks like on the RGB, where it's getting a dark red, it looks like it's about uh, 12800. So maybe if we change the red here, so leave it at zero, and then maybe we'll change this to 128. That gives us a pretty dark green. Okay, so next one we're going to go over to this green and we're going to say RGB and let's do what are they doing for these? 160, 32, 32. So maybe we can try something similar. So we'll go with 32, 160, 32. Okay, so then it's getting a little bit lighter. So notice the first color is red, the second color is green third color is blue. So this green one is the highest um, number of these three and we're doing green. So that makes sense. So now I'm going to go look, I'm going to look at and just kind of match how they did it here. So we got 192, 64, 64 for this RGB. So the red is at 192. So I'm going to put the green at 192 on this one here. RGB. So I think it was 64, 192, 192. Oh, that was wrong. <laughs> 64 here, I believe. There we go. And then I'm going to look at red 3 and just kind of mimic it. So I'm just going to copy this. It'll make it a little faster. And we've got 244, 96, 96. So I'm going to swap these numbers around. So I got 96 for the red. Then I got 2... What was it? 224? 224 and 96. And then the last one, I've got these three numbers and I'm going to copy them and paste and then just slightly change this. So 255 for this green and then we'll change the red back to 127. All right, so now we've got from a dark green to a light green. All right, you can do the same with blue as well 
um, just changing those numbers. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put those numbers in for blue. Now notice I have these on the first one, my red numbers are the high ones. On the second one, I've made the middle ones, which is the green, the highest. And on the third one for blues, I've made the blues the higher numbers. So it's starting with darker and going to lighter on all three. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and hit finish.